Albert, who am I saying hello to? Huh? <laughs> Hi everyone. Hello. Hello again. Hi. It's so lovely to see you. I've just got to put my computer up. I don't know why. <laughs> Hi Anthony. I don't know why, but I've got subtitles on here. Captions are auto-generated. Oh well. I gotta try and turn them off. <laughs> How is everyone today? Are you all happy? Yeah, I'm really happy because I've been up early this morning and I've been out, oh, getting paint everywhere. I've been out walking with my doggy Albert in the woods there. And I've been, look at these wildflowers here. Whoop. And from the hedgerows and I've been painting those, but we're not gonna paint flowers today. And hello everyone. Holly, didn't I? I asked Holly, what shall we paint today? And Holly's had a brilliant idea, but I'll surprise you with that in a minute. I've also had um, another suggestion from a, another friend of mine, Evan, and we're going to include his suggestion today in what we do as well. I want to say a big thank you before I start. A big thank you to everybody, everybody who's been sending me their pictures and their comments and it has been just amazing to see them all just lovely i thank you so much right okay here we go today we're starting with a bit of cardboard as usual a nice flat bit that i prepared earlier nothing on the front a little bit of writing on the back uh oh there's another picture that i've been working on that's some flowers there Today then, we're going to start as we usually do with the three basic colours in acrylic paints. You've got them all ready, okay? Those of you who haven't joined me before, I'll explain as we go along why acrylics. But those of you who have joined me before will be just itching to get on. So we'll start the first layer right now, okay? Straight on there. Let's have some yellow at the top this time, okay? And there's a reason for this. And then some blue at the bottom in the left-hand corner. Although, don't worry if you do get it in the right. As I've said before to you all, and I'll say it again, painting is not so much a matter of getting things right. doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong in painting. It's all about what feels good. This is exactly what it's about. If you can paint something that makes you feel good, whether it's tiny little details or whether it's just big splodges like this, that's what painting's about. It's got to make you feel good. It doesn't have to be tidy. Let me just show you something I've been working on this morning that's really, really messy, okay? Look at that for messy. Can you see how messy that is when you get close up? But the effect of it then from a distance, you see, can you see that it's flowers in a vase? Isn't that nice though, just to be messy like that? So yeah, don't worry about messy. Messy's good for artists, yep. So a bit of the pink then, the red there, in the bottom, okay, down there. Right, here we go. These are the three primary colors, aren't they? So you can use any of these colors, mixing them together with a bit of white or black, and they will make any color that you can think of. The same, ink, same colours as you get in your printer. So I'm using a brush that's quite big, the thickest brush I've got, the biggest brush I've got, because I'm doing the background first, and it would just take ages if I used a tiny brush, plus I like a big brush. The other thing you can do to do this with is um, a baby wipe or a rag or a cloth, you can do that. So essentially I'm just going to start mixing the pink there, bring it right up to the edge like that, then I'm going to bring the blue around there, up to that edge, and then in the middle there where they mix. Look at that. They're going to make a real nice purple, aren't they? So I'm just bringing that up in a big smile, like that, okay? Like that, right into the corner. Not worrying if, you know, it's a bit scruffy around the edges. That's fine. We'll tidy that up. Yeah, I just want that to look nice. Then... I'm going to put a squidge of white into that, right here in the middle-ish where it lands. This is the same paint, the De La Rowney System 3. tend to get them in tubes like that. And the reason that I use acrylics, I'm just mixing this white in here now. I haven't cleaned the brush at all, so the brush is quite dirty. 
The reason I use acrylics like this, mums and dads, is because you can just keep painting over it. It dries lovely and quick, but when it does dry, you know, it won't come off. That's the idea of it. But it, you can paint over things like this, do you see? And that means that you're less likely to worry about anything that you paint that you want to just go over. You're not going to be rubbing things out and you're just more likely to get nice results straight away. Now, can you see what I've done with that? That's bent over like a nice smile there, isn't it? And I've not mixed that white completely in, have I? I've got a lovely, lovely purpley colour there, a little bit of a mauvey colour, violet, a light blue there, going to a real light blue. I think, what's going on here? What are we painting? Well, it can be anything that you want it to be, can't it? That's the brilliant thing about painting. You can paint what you like and you can change your mind halfway through. You don't have to stick with one thing. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is not going to be the sea, as it looks like, but the sky. Ha ha! <laughs> I was doing it upside down deliberately. So that's going to be the sky, but here, yeah, I've got a bit of yellow and I'm going to add to that a bit of blue. Now I'm putting the blue down underneath the yellow because if you squint and look at these together, the blue there and the yellow, right? Squint, close your eyes real tight, look at them. You'll see that the yellow's a lot lighter and the blue kind of disappears into the background. It's a bit darker. The yellow's lighter and brighter. So when we do this next bit, which is going to be the, uh, the grass and the earth there, I want it darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. So what we're going to do is, I've not cleaned my brush, just as it was, just get that blue going right across the bottom there. I love this blue, it's called cyan, it's a lovely blue. Then I'm going to mix, oh my gosh, look at that, how nice is that? <laughs> wow, just look at that. Now then, if that gives you pleasure, like it gives me pleasure, then I'm afraid there's nothing for it. You're probably going to become an artist. <laughs> and you're going to get used to having paint all over your hands and all over everything, really. And then we're going to go up there like that, pushing it, scrubbing it. Look at that. Listen to that on there. Let me put my microphone nearer. Can you hear that? Wow. It's nice, isn't it? And again, I'm just going to put a little bit of white into that middle bit there. Come on. Oh, out you come. Doesn't want to come out. That's the trouble with big pots of it like that. There we go. Just a little bit into the middle. Just a few splops. Splops, that's a new word. Uh, scrub, scrub, scrub. Scrubbing that in. Making a nice light green there. Look at all those colours you can get just with those three colors and a white it's quite lovely isn't it very lovely okay i've got a blodge of white there but not to worry just wipe that off pick that up from the floor okay now do you remember anyone last time we were here and all the times before oh, just before we go on look how pretty that is what I said to you about uh, wiping your brush off because these are plastic paints so it's quite important that we wipe our brushes off first uh, before the paint has chance to dry on the brush and spoil it but also because we don't want a lot of plastic in the water so what I've done is wipe that off I'm just going to stand it in um, a jar of water there just so it doesn't dry I did just want to show you something I kept under here from last time do you remember I said about when these when you cleaned your brush on these baby wipes if you let them dry you get things like this that are just beautiful and you can cut those out make nice bunting make little clothes for your teddy bears things like that but what I do with them is I don't know if you'll be able to see this but I actually stick them on bits of canvas like that that's actually stuck on with paint there that is a bit of baby wipe it is honestly you can't really see it because I've painted over it a lot but I like to use them as collage on my paintings so that's just something you can do with them. Right, so this is drying nicely. That's the other thing about these acrylics. They they dry pretty quick, um, especially if you're painting on cardboard like I am here, you know, because the cardboard absorbs some of the water and the rest of the water it evaporates. That means it becomes little molecules that go into the air and then it just leaves this plastic film there, which in a minute, when that's dry, I'll be able to draw on. 
The other way, the reason that I just love these um, acrylics, and I've just realised you can't really see me very well there, but we'll leave it that for now. You can see the picture, that's the important bit. The other reason I love the acrylics is that when they're dry, as I was saying, it's a plastic layer, so you can paint or you can draw with chalk like this, anything that you like on there. And then if you decide that you don't want it there, you just rub it off and it's gone and it doesn't take any paint off. So you can just keep on drawing what you want, you know, aeroplanes, birds, yeah, anything that you could imagine in the sky, you could draw and you could think, is that right? Is that what I want there? And then if it's not, you just wipe it off. What I do want in the sky, and this was Holly's suggestion, or well, I'm not going to do it just yet, I'm going to do the ground first. That's not quite dry yet, so I'm just going to whiz it with a hairdryer. This is where you have to talk amongst yourselves for a minute. And kids, catch up. Come on, get your backgrounds done. If you are using a hairdryer at home, children, always you ask permission because you wouldn't want your mum, would you? So be careful with it. Mm -hmm. But it is good. It's very good for, for drying things off. So there, that's all really nice and dry now. Look, look again. Look at these beautiful colours. This could be anything you wanted, couldn't it? You could have maybe with some dolphins jumping out there. Do you see in a nice strange colored sunset but a sunset but i'm going to go back to this way around right so what i want here on the grass here on the earth i want some people yeah and for those of you who have seen um this before these classes you'll know that i like to use very simple shapes to draw my people and my dogs my houses animals anything you can imagine so people I tend to do you a triangle for the body, a circle for the head, two sticks for the arms and legs. But sometimes I don't put the arms facing away from me because I'm not very good at drawing faces. So I don't worry about it. I don't draw them. So here we go then. Here's my forward to you. Can you see that there? Is that good? So that's the triangle for the body. Yes, that's in the right place. I'll just check in so you could see it. That's the circle for the head. And don't forget, you know, do this with chalk on, on acrylic. And then if you think, mm, no, no. So triangle for the body, yeah. Circle for the head. Two sticks for the legs, yeah. I'm not even going to put any arms on this person here. I'm just going to draw another person right next to them. Yeah. Triangle for the body. Circle for the head two sticks for the legs yeah and then I'm going to do some more people over here but I'm going to pretend that's in the distance it's far away and when things are in the distance we're near far near far <laughs> do you say do you say do you know what I have to admit I have been eating sweets this afternoon <laughs> If anybody's thinking she's a bit more lively than usual, it's sugar. So, yeah, when things are nearer, like this chalk, yeah, it's bigger, isn't it? When it's farther away from you, it's smaller. So what we do when we're drawing things in the distance, we, all we do is make them smaller. So I'm going to put two more people here. Triangle, triangle, two sticks for the legs and two circles for the heads. I'm not going to put arms on any of them because uh, that's too much detail and that becomes hard work then. Okay, so now I've got those in place there. What I'm going to do is get my black paint and I'm going to get a smaller brush. But by smaller, I don't mean a little pointy one. I mean one that's about the size hmm, of my little, my little finger with this one. is. It could be one that's about the size of your big finger. That's fine. But don't go too small. 
because if you use a very small brush uh, you make a fiddly little line and you get a lot of detail and at this point in the painting um, it's too early really to put much detail in it's better just to focus on the the bigger things the big objects the outlines so what I'm doing is just going over those chalk lines with black paint just straight out of the tube as well all I did was just put a little bit of water on my brush just to help the paint move a bit and then I'm just dabbing the top of it like that because with acrylic paints it will dry pretty quickly and you'll end up putting that in the bin and that's a, that's a waste of resources so there we go I want to make our paint last I'm just outlining those a little bit of water on my brush outline 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 okay and uh, look how nice these people in the background are already can you see that I've not been very careful I've not been too careful with it exactly following those outline and almost by not following it you get a little bit more movement into your people there it's quite nice isn't it these people are in the foreground now what I'm going to do with them is just color that bit in so that they've got hair I'm going to make them two people with long hair there we go and already now what you're suggesting what you're making happen by magic you're creating this is you're creating the illusion of there being four people two together here two together there and of course wherever four people are gathered together in my opinion there should always be a couple of dogs as well so I saw a picture somebody sent me the other day um, of themselves and the painting that they'd done with their little um, it wasn't um, a little dog wasn't cross it was quite happy I think but you know it was like um, a mixture of a dash and something else so to do that I'll just do a straight line like that there and then just a little triangle two little bits for its ears and short legs and quite a long tail and I'm going to put Albert in here and he is a triangle like that you could do this in chalk as well but because I've done it hundreds of times I don't need to do it in chalk first so there's Albert's body's triangle that's another triangle for his head and there's two triangles for his just two little blobs actually for his ears and then a tail and he's just outlined in black at the moment I'll paint him white shortly right so those are your people because um, next what I want to put on here and this is the other lovely thing about acrylics here's a little bit of um, the magenta the pinky red uh, and a little bit of white let's just get a little bit of white because oh. I didn't put the lid on properly it's it's um the hole's gone quite smaller <laughs> so I've just got a little bit of white there see how opaque this is yeah opaque means that it's not transparent that you can't see through it that it completely hides what's underneath now you see watercolors wouldn't do this and I know a lot of people when they're starting painting use watercolors but really they're quite hard to use acrylics are very easy can you see how that background's just gone now so I'm just going to wipe that brush again get a little bit more white on it and then I can Colour Albert in. <laughs> and I like to do his nose sort of facing up at me. Can you see where I've joined those triangles together to make the head and the body together? Yeah. And now let's have a different colour for the other coat or dress. There we go. Can you see now by um, not I'm just almost going up to the outline I'm just leaving a little bit of it up to you whether you want to color the outline in completely or whether you don't want to put an outline in but again I'm not being too tidy with it can you see why I'm not very tidy there and that actually makes some nice differences in the colors I've got a little bit of yellow left on my brush so with that I'm just going to put a couple of little um, just get rid of the paint there we go yeah and let's just 
put a little bit of that colour onto there. And finally, I'll just just wiped my brush off a little on the baby wipe there, so I've still got a bit of paint on, a bit of yellow on there. I've got a little bit of blue, tiny bit of blue. Just colour that in there. Let's put a little collar on him, collar on him. And then what I like to do is actually just scrub. Can you hear that? Scrubbing that brush on there. Just cleaning my brush off underneath those people and those ones there. Okay, we're getting there, aren't we? Okay, so what you can do now if you'd like to, when this is dry, when it's really dry, don't do it before it is dry. I'm going to do it very carefully just to show you because it's not quite dry yet. But you can wipe that chalk off then. Yeah, and you'll just be left with those nice, oops, people. Your nice drawings there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay, so we've still got quite a lot of sky there, haven't we? Still got a lot of sky. Now then, so we had some options there, didn't we, about what we could put in the sky. We could put aeroplanes, kites, birds, bees, buzzards. Oh, ow, balloons. My friend Holly suggested, and I thought it was a brilliant idea, that we might put a hot air balloon in there, okay? So what I've got here is some people looking at the hot air balloon, and I'm going to draw it with chalk. Yep, so this is nice and dry, dry here. So a hot air balloon, well, you know the shape of it, just big, big and round, isn't it? So you could actually draw, draw you know, a round balloon there, and then the basket is just a square underneath it, isn't it? So you've got a circle essentially and a square. So a hot air balloon is a circle and then the basket's a square. And it's as I've said before in each of these classes, whenever you're drawing anything, anything you want to draw, these flowers, you know, this table, that cup, look at it and try and work out which simple shapes it's made up of, you know. Can you see a rectangle or a triangle? See, these are all made of those simple shapes, yeah? But for this, hot air balloon would be a circle, a square, and then it would have the, the ropes attached to it like that, wouldn't it? And then you could colour that in. That would be quite nice. But for me, when I think of hot air balloons, you do see them right up in the sky. And like I said to you, when something's near to you, it's quite big, isn't it? And when it's away, it's quite small. So generally, we see them in the sky. They're quite away. They're quite small like that but I think it's quite exciting and when you see one quite close up that's just landing don't, don't you think or that's just taking off oh, sorry about that pause I was saying it's, it's interesting when you see a hot air balloon that's just landing or just taking off so what I'm going to do is imagine that this is my hot air balloon here so can you see that's I've started there to paint a huge circle could you imagine it would come right out there wouldn't it so that's just like a quarter of the circle a little bit of the circle there isn't it the circle would go like that so that's actually going to be my hot air balloon and then there'll be a big basket here wouldn't there with people in it can you imagine and then there's the ropes that would go onto the hot air balloon there do you think he's in for a bumpy landing <laughs> So I'm quite happy with that now, so what I'm going to do is wet my brush a little bit. I'm just using this one just to do the outline with, and then I'm, that's where my balloon is. Yeah, uh, Here we are, those are the ropes for it. And this is the basket, putting that at a little bit of an angle, because I think they're going to come in for a bit of a bump. Put an eye on Albert there. Yeah, this little dog looks like he's a bit scared and is running away. Okay, so I'm going to get my big, big brush out again. That's just been resting in the water, hasn't it? Okay, and some white paint. What did I do with that? There it is. I'm going to just go over this in white. Yeah, there we are. So because my brush was not absolutely 100% clean, it was just rest. I'd wiped it on from last time. Can you see and can you see how then it's gone like a pinky bluey white and again that makes it just a little bit more interesting doesn't it yeah and whilst i'm doing this as well i'm going into that black line there 
yeah and that's picking up a little bit of the black and that's giving the balloon a bit of shadow at the bottom which is what you'd need because the light falls on the top of things they tend to be lighter when you paint in them and then as it goes down there we are it tends to be darker that's nice so then for the basket a wickery color so i'm having a little bit of yellow yeah, and you can, you know, if you want to practice your colour mixing, just get another sheet of cardboard and put out a tiny little dab of red, tiny little dab of yellow, mix those and then just try putting a bigger dab of yellow, tiny bit of clay and you'll get some really nice colours. You'll get to know them then. So to make the brie, wow, how nice is that? <laughs> yeah, and that's just going to go into there like that. I'm never really successful with my brownie colours, probably needed more yellow, but that's quite a nice, that'll do, that's a grey colour. While I've got a bit of grey on here, that I don't want, I'm going to put some more on. Clean my brush off on there. Talking about grey, the sun's just gone in, so sorry about the light changing. And the video keeps getting interrupted, sorry. I was just saying, I'm just scrubbing my shadow and under there, yeah. And under here, let's put shadow under there. Yeah, because that starts to give that shape and definition then, doesn't it? And I'll put a little bit more yellow on my brow into that. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember when I've said about um, when we're painting things, you know, I said when we were painting the sea in a previous one, that if you move it over like that, your brush, when you, the sea's like, you know, you try and paint what you feel. So when you're doing a basket shape like this, when you're doing a basket like this, if you just do it a bit like you could imagine basket work to be. So think about putting the paint on and that way you'll start to get an effect. I'm sorry, the video's a bit um, jumpy today. So that way like you're putting on there. That looks like a bit like basket. I don't know why we're getting interruption, I'm sorry. I'll just keep um, an eye on this and try and keep repeating myself. Mm. So right, cleaning my brush off again. Uh -huh. There we are. And thank you everybody for watching. It's nice to see you all there. I can see how many people are watching and it's really lovely um, to have you along. So I'm gonna put a couple of people up in the basket, I think. And again, simple shapes, so a little bit of black, yep, little triangle there, and, and remember they'll be smaller because they're further away, yep, so a triangle and a, a circle there for the head, another triangle and a circle, yep, mm-hmm, arm there, and he can be throwing out or pulling in, so he can be throwing out, I'm trying to repeat myself, Pulling in one of the sandbags that they have to help them come up or down. Oh, what a shame that we're getting interruption. I'm really sorry. But here we are. You've got the, got the ideas of this coming on now. Yep. What I'd like you to do now is to think about what you'd like, how you'd like to decorate your balloon, okay? Because that needs lots of decoration on it doesn't it it can have flowers on it you know it can have zigzags on it it can have stripes going across or stripes going up and down any of those kind of things but what i just wanted to do on this little bit here um, was to put in something that somebody suggested to me uh, I've forgotten, Evan, Ewan? Anyway, some stars here in the background, which I think is quite a nice idea. So I'm just going to do those with yellow dots like that, okay? Because that's going to suggest far away, right up in the dark sky. And if you wanted to, of course, you could make that even darker. You could put some black into the, the yellow. I'm just going to go onto there. And then clean my brush under that. Right. A bit of white, okay, tiny bit there, and I'm just going to do so. Oh, we've stopped again. I'm sorry. 
Are we back? Hmm. Oh, sorry about that. It's it's um it is cutting in and out today, but I think we're nearly there. I just wanted to show you how I was going to do some daisies in the front here. So really, you've got to now at home colour in your balloon as you like it, and don't forget to send me any images of your coloured in balloon. I'd love to see it. And the daisies then. Okay, so I've got a little bit of paint on my flat brush, yeah. And I'm just going to do like one, two, three, four, five, six little blobs like that on the side of the brush. Yeah. And you could do as many of those as you like. Yeah. And then you could put a little bit of yellow in the middle of them. And what I'd then like you to do, don't forget this bit, this is really important. You need to put your name on the bottom when you have finished. And there we are. That's hot air balloon for you. I'm going to cut that a little bit short because the signal is absolutely... Colour that balloon in really bright. That's going to be the centre of the painting. That's what we want people to look at, so make that really bright. Send me any questions you've got. I'd love to hear from you. Send me any images as well. I do love to hear from them. And just to let you know, mums and dads, next class is uh, Monday night for adults. It's going to be six o'clock here. It's a chill and chat session. Next for children, Wednesday at three as usual and Friday at three next week. And new online creative me four day workshop. Uh, have a look. It's all on Facebook, all on my um, website as well. That is brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining me. Have a marvellous weekend, darlings. See you next week.